Hi everybody. Okay. How are you all doing today? Um, let's start out. Okay. This is the roll up your sleever. Will that affect you spiritually or will that condemn your soul um, to hell? So I want to not give you my opinion, but let's just look at um, some scriptures to, to talk about that. Um, First of all, all of us already are going to go to hell if we don't have Christ. I mean, everybody, you know, we're worried about people doing this or doing that. Well, any of us out there that haven't accepted Jesus Christ, we're going to go to hell anyway and be eternally lost. And let's read Psalm 14. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. They have all turned aside. They have all together become corrupt. There is none who does good. No, not one. Not one of us does good. Okay, let's look at Romans 3.23. For all have sinned, this is in the New Testament, and fallen short of the glory of God. God is so majestic, so perfect, so holy that none of us can go into his presence. That's why the whole Old Testament is, is filled with the story of God's people uh, making sacrifices for their sin. But it was an ongoing thing they had to always do because it never lasted. And until Jesus Christ came to pay the price once and for all, that was the way to God. But now since Jesus came, it's a price he paid once and forever so let's look at another scripture you know in case some of us might say well um you know i'm not as bad as so and so you know i oh i tell a lie here and there but i've not murdered or anything well this is what the scripture says if we're guilty of one thing we're guilty of all of it for whosoever shall keep the whole law yet stumbles in one point is guilty of all of it so if we stumble in just one area, then we're guilty of all of it. We can't just say, well, we're not as bad as so-and-so because we're all just the same. So let's go back to Romans and read that whole section. Oops, maybe I'm in the wrong part, okay. But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to one, to all and on all who believe. For, for there's no difference, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood, meaning a payment, like Jesus' blood was a a, a sacrifice for our sins, a payment for our sins, to, to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. And we all know this scripture, John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But you might say, you know, well, um, this person, that person says, well, we believe in Jesus. Well, there's more to it than just a head knowledge belief, because in James it says, you believe there's one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. So we believing in Jesus is more than just a head belief. It's a belief that we um, say to God, Lord Jesus, forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and come and live through me and we give you our life. So it's not just a head knowledge belief. You know, when we see so many in the new age and everything today where, oh, they believe in God. Well, it's not quite like that. Remember the story of Nicodemus and Jesus said to him, you must be born again. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 
So you have to be born again. Okay, so let's just read this whole story. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and you do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how, you, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the Son of, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, and his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So, guys, when we're born again, we're born of not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed that lives and abides forever. It, it can't die. It can't decay. And that's um, 1 Peter 1, 23. And the word for decay means perishable, corruptible. And it says we're born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible through the word of God which lives and abides forever. So the word of God has caused us to know about Jesus. And when we accept Jesus Christ and we are born again, he lives through us. And we are then, our souls are incorruptible. They cannot be corrupted. The only way that man can be corrupted or give up his soul, we're already lost without Jesus. But if a person commits the unpardonable sin, that's unforgivable. And then the mark, when it comes, those people will go to hell without a doubt. But other than that, nothing else. We're born of incorruptible seed. We cannot perish. Our souls can't perish now. Uh, our, our bodies, absolutely. So, so let's just look at some other things the Bible says about that. Psalm 56, 11, in God, I have put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Psalm 118, 6, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Okay, guys, that's what it says in the Psalms. But what did Jesus say? And if we can't believe Jesus in this, then we can't believe him about salvation either. Either all his word is true or none of it's true. So let's, Luke 12, 4, and I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that, have no more they can do. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. This is Jesus Christ speaking. He is saying only God has the power to cast us into hell, our souls. 
A human being cannot do that. Okay, Matthew 28, and Jesus says this again. These are his words. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So we either can believe all of scripture or we might as well not believe any of it. Okay, in 2 Timothy it says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So his word is all we need to make us complete. We don't need extra revelation that, oh, the Lord told me this or that, that has no uh, bearing on the word of God. Now, can the word of God, can the Holy Spirit illuminate the word of God to us? Yes, it can. But I think extra revelation that's outside of the word of God, that is not biblical. That's what the Gnostics and the Kabbalists, you know, they believe that the way to God is through hidden knowledge that only if you study enough and only a few have this revealed knowledge that no one else has. Guys, scripture is clear enough that a child should be able to understand it. Now, granted, the King James is hard for kids, but the, the Bible is living and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. It's not a dead work. So even the King James, any way the word gets into a child, a child can understand it. So we either believe all of it or we might as well believe none of it. So the way I take what Jesus said is man doesn't have the power, once we're in Christ, to put our souls into hell. Now, do I think the jab is not good for you physically? I absolutely do. And I, for that reason, I won't take it. But I don't think it can um, send your soul into hell. I don't see how that contradicts scripture to me. And um, let's just go read about Revelation, about the mark, okay? Revelation 13, 16. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. Now, if this jab eventually gets to the point where it's in your right hand or forehead and you can't buy or sell and it's tied to image of uh tied to worship of the image of the beast then it's then it's a you know then it's very it is the mark i mean i don't see how you can get around it at that point but at this point um i i i don't see it yet okay the proclamation of the three angels and this is in revelation 14 let me take a drink of coffee I'm talking too quickly. Okay, then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and springs of water. Okay, That's, this is a group of three angels speaking in uh, Revelation 14. And another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Okay, guys, from, I mean, just read this for yourself. You know, don't listen to me. Get into the Word and read it for yourself. You know, the first angel says, um, proclaims the gospel to the whole world. The second angel says Babylon is fallen. Then the third warns about uh, the beast and, and an image to the beast is made to worship. The whole, the near, you know, and, and I've heard this, you know, some of my friends say, and I get this. I mean, I think it's right to question and to study and to ask and to ponder, you know, um, but the Bible says the road is narrow. And few, yes, it does. But if that's all about the road to eternal life. The road to eternal life is Jesus Christ and him only. Um, the deception is about Jesus Christ and false Christ. The whole book is about Jesus Christ. And the narrow road is, is using another way to get to heaven. I think the things that will make us lost is very clear in scripture. You know, God would not go to all the trouble he did to bring us to himself, to trick us into 
being lost forever. I mean, that that makes no sense. I mean, it goes against scripture. And you guys read scripture for yourself. You know, don't even listen to me. You know, because the day is coming in Amos 8, 11 that says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. There's going to be a famine for hearing the words of the Lord. You know, how many of us can, we can sit and watch, you know, a couple hours of YouTube a day and five minutes a day of the Bible at the most? Guys, we have to get that into us. Now, I'm not any different than you are. It's not like I just wake up and think, you know, this is, I just have an overwhelming desire to do it. I have to uh, commit myself. You know, the Bible says study to show yourself to approve, be a good Berean. You know, just get it into us. You know, don't worry right now. You know, just believe what it says. Don't worry, well, does this actually mean this other thing? Because it means what it says. You know, granted, it can be illuminated. We can go deeper, but it means what it says and it says what it means. So I just, I mean, like like I always say, get into the word and ask the Lord for yourself. Ask him if, oh gosh, I hope I've taped this this whole time. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, I just wanted to share that scripture with you and I love y'all and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, guys. I'm not exactly sure why this is showing this, but I just want to say, I just want to add this real quick. Um, if this seems a contradiction to my last video about um, can the roll up your sleever, like open you up to um, demonic um, oppression, um, it, it's not. Because first of all, I, I think a Christian, I mean, if we have the Holy Spirit living in, in us, we are protected against uh, demonic um, possession right so it's it's no different so i guess i just want to be clear that i'm not saying one thing in that and saying a different thing now and i also do want to add that okay if guys if the only thing i just want you to think about this okay i'm not i'm not ever coming to you and saying i'm the be all end all i'm saying get into the word and ask god what is the be all end all okay like there are seven and a half billion people on this planet right Let's say if half of the people in the United States, you know, um, half a billion people, let's take a quarter of a billion. If those, which you know, that's way off whack. If all those listen to truthers about the roll up your sleeve or that sort of thing, that would mean seven and a quarter billion people all over the world would never hear any of this information. And if they took the jab, they're going to be lost eternally, you know, or little grandma, grand, grandpa that loves Jesus with all their heart, that's in a nursing home, and they're made to have the jab, but then they're lost eternally. That makes no sense to me. That goes against scripture. Everything I see in scripture is we are going to know when we take the mark that we are making a decision to serve the beast, to serve the antichrist, not just the beast system and be in it, but there's actually going to be a, a person that is imbued, you know, uh, indwelt with Satan. That's going to be the Antichrist. Just like Jesus was God, he, he, Satan is going to counterfeit that. There's going to be an Antichrist, human being. And by taking the mark, we are going to say we honor him and we believe him. And he, in, in essence, is our savior. So I think when the mark comes, that is what it will be signifying. So anyway, I wanted to add that, guys. And um, like I say, I don't know why you're not seeing but a picture. You're not seeing me because uh, <laughs> it's Sunday. <laughs> and I look worse than normally. And I have a pajama top on. And so anyway, okay. Love you all. Talk to you soon.